All right, I want to lean heavily on the message board because I want your thoughts. Who is Tennessee's most important non-starter? So I'm taking any argument for a guy who could push for a starting position off the table. Caleb, I wrote about mine. If you check out off the hook sports.com, let me get your thoughts on who is Tennessee's most important non starter. I am going to say, see, this is very, very tough for me because some of these players, it's like, do we consider them starters or are they rotational guys? So just a question on that for a minute. Interior defensive line, like they go like five deep. Aren't they all kind of co-starters? Amari Thomas, Elijah Simmons, Jackson Moy, like Omar Norman Lott. I just kind of took those out. Uh, okay. Because it, to me, it's more important who's in the end of the game and it's going to be whoever's freshest. So I, I really just took the defensive tackles out. I didn't know any other way to do it. I I, I felt that too. I'm going to say, oh, Dylan stole it from me on the message board. I was going to say Vice and Lane. That Ooh. guy has got to emerge on the offensive line because Tennessee desperately needs a backup center because we love Cooper on our show. Cooper has battled injuries throughout his Tennessee career. If he misses a game or two, Bison Ling's got to be ready to step in. All right. So is that your vote as well, Bison Lang? Yep. My vote is Bison Lang. All right. I'm going with Joshua Josephs. And here's why. If something happens to James Pierce, and I certainly hope it doesn't, not predicting anything, but you need that elite pass rusher from the Leo position, don't you, Caleb? Yes. The only reason I broke with you on this is I thought I don't get, is it Joshua Joseph's actually starting? I thought he was going to start opposite James Pierce. If, if, if they do that, that's great. That's a great position battle to be in. I think he's better. I think they're both. I think Joshua Joseph's is better a little bit standing up. So I think whoever is the other guy to bring the pressure is, is going to be, is going to be a bigger one. Yeah. Let's remember this. Um, Will Anderson. Mm -hmm. He had a he had a fantastic junior season, but people didn't credit him with as much because he was so accounted for. So don't rule out the chance that James Pierce could have fewer sacks than he had last year, where he had, a, I believe, 12, and still have a huge impact on the season. Will Anderson was also great against the run. I'm not sure James Pierce has that. But the guy on the other side or the guy backing up James Pierce They've got to get pressure from both sides. Okay, so I could see that. So I guess okay. So let's see how does how does Tennessee run their their units? They run a nose tackle, another defensive tackle, a, the Leo spot, and then I guess the other spot is like a defensive end that's that kind of is a bigger guy that could play in the middle that that always plays with his hand on the line, right? Usually has his hands down. Okay, so that's like where the Dominic Bailey or the Tyree West come in, right? Yes. Okay. All right. I see what you're saying. So they really only ever have one true just edge rusher out on the field. Well, unless it's a passing situation. I mean, okay. you might, might have two on each side, but we might be overly complicating this topic as well. It, it Because it's complicated. Let's call it what it is. The reason it's so complicated is like, it's honestly more of a three, three, five. Like everyone says four, three, three, four, uh, four, two, five. I'm like, I feel like defenses now are like three, one, two, five. That's what they run. Three down linemen, an edge rusher that can play hand off or hand on, two linebackers in, and then five defensive backs. Um, Here's the way I'm going to post this, unless you change my mind. Who is the Vols' best non-starter? Vice and Lang, Joshua Josephs, any backup quarterback. Are their best non-starter or their most important? That's a We're different question. Say most important. We're going to yes, say most important. Their best non-starter is Mike Matthews. Okay. So we're. He's not the most important this year because they have receivers. So we're going with this. And I feel confident that this is the direction to go. So there you can vote on the YouTube page. Who is Tennessee's most important non-starter? Bison Lang, Joshua Josephs, any backup quarterback. Now, you mentioned Mike Matthews, but how about one of the receivers being uh, significant? Maybe it's Nimrod. Because Tennessee has had a receiver go down each of their last two seasons. So, Caleb, while that we talk about Dante Thornton, Thornton, and we think that I was on a Nashville radio station this morning, 
we believe that Josh Heupel is going to settle on those three, but he's had to use a fourth by injury's sake. And uh, Tennessee likes to throw the ball a lot. So what kind of battle do you see there? I hate to say this because I like the guy. I think Nimrod and Caleb Webb are the odd men out in this offense because your three, you have Brew McCoy, Squirrel White, and then you have either Dante Thornton, Chris Brazel, or Mike Matthews. Whichever, so if somebody go, gets hurt, there's still are two other people you can go to between those two, between that three. So it's. I'm going to push back on Nimrod. I, th- I think that Nimrod can can be a solid player uh the outside receiver they just had the, uh, left at the diving catch that everybody loved ramel keaton yeah ramel Ke- i think he can be a ramel keaton that's my ceiling nimrod now the okay. question is is there room for a guy that has that ceiling at the time that's there what may i mean not they're be. so loaded at receiver now there's so much so talent well he could be surpassed but i like him to step in and play that role a role that ramel keaton played and that was a very necessary role at the time, considering the injuries at the position. Yeah, it, it was. Um, I just, I, I think that's why they went for Chris Brazel. I think they think Chris Brazel is better at that. I believe that Chris Brazel is physically better than Nimrod. I'm just saying if the opportunity is there until that man enters the transfer portal, I believe he'll be ready. Portions of the program. I, I want to, yes. oh, sorry. We need to bring up one thing because Derek did play it well. The most important non-starter is another guy they t- trotted out the other day, Jeremiah okay. Tealander. Very good one. Oh. Uh, Apex Apparel Group Design, 15% off your first order. Apex Apparel, they do so much more. A one-stop shop for all brand supply products, not just clothes. Design, brand, market, your way. Unique products to promote your business. Check out what I have on right now my embroidered off the hook sports shirt which looks fantastic called tyler 865-919-3001 get 20 per, i'm sorry 15 percent off your first order 865-919-3001 we definitely should have not left t lander off that list and as proof that he's important uh tim banks corrected me on his name in front of everybody so I really thought, yeah so that means that he's really important Oh my gosh. So is it is it T Lander or Telander? <laughs> it's T Lander. Just for the record, it's T Lander. It's not Telander. So uh how good can he be? I hope you I hope he's not very good this year, except on special teams, right? Because if he's very good, he looks like a Mike to me. So that's not he would be playing in place of Keenan Pilly. If he could play outside, I don't think he's a t- as talented as we're both very high on Arian Carter. If he plays a lot this season, Caleb, I don't think that's good for the balls. But if he gets ready for 2025 behind Peely, I think Tennessee's got something special in their hands. Well, I get your point, but I would also argue that I think sometimes uh, – am I crazy or are the days of three linebackers just dead in college football? Like, don't you sometimes put three linebackers on the field together still? Well, in running situations, you will. I mean, he would be the perfect Sam backer, a strong side yeah. backer. But n- nowadays, he's not going to be able to cover another receiver or a very athletic tight end. That's the problem. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like, I don't know, maybe – I feel like we as we as media members can't bring ourselves to accept like there's no such thing as a base four three anymore. D- don't all. include me in that. I'm off. I want to go back to the base four three. I don't understand why we're calling the uh, while we're making up another position for goodness sake. But we are. We're with Star and Leo and all these other things. I'm sorry, but the nickel guy is just a smaller linebacker. Yes. Or, or just a corner. See, my my concept of nickel is just the guy that wasn't good enough to be one of the two starting cornerbacks or the, or, or the two starting safeties. But you're right. It, it's it, it's it makes it so confusing now with defenses because posi- it, it, it you know you talk about positionless basketball. It feels like there's positionless football on defense now, doesn't it? Yes. And you don't have to have your hand down anymore. You don't and and. Uh, I think James Pierce plays a lot of times with his hand down just to make him a better football player because he knows that he could just bring havoc with his hand up. I I think that he is 
really driven to be a great football player. And I just hope that that's able to happen because he is incredibly talented. He is. He is. Quick story real quick. Uh, Tennessee gave up a Hail Mary to lose to Florida in 2017, Butch Jones is last year. And in this changing day of college football where you need more defensive backs, Butch Jones was asked how he let that happen. And he's why didn't you put an extra defensive back out there? His exact quote, we don't have a dime package. Who said you don't have a dime package? Butch Jones said that he doesn't have a dime package for Tennessee. 